Good evening, students. Hope you're well. Welcome to Canvas Week. One of the things that we want to do this week is that we want to begin preparing for our final exam packets. Last week, we had great opportunity to take a look at our final exam packets, and we talked about them. They're all available to you in the previous model module in Canvas. But this week, I want us to begin preparing the materials that we want to turn in with our final exam packet. One of those um, items is your final exam essay. Now you'll notice on the final exam essay assignment that there are actually four different articles that you need to read in preparation for answering that main question that's part of your exam. And so one of those articles has to do with gentrification. And so today I just wanted to do a short video just explaining a little bit of what gentrification is to help you better understand the article once you enter into it. One thing about the um, article in question, and it's Sherman Alexie's gentrification, one thing about that article is that it's not an academic article. It's not a journal article. It's not a scholarly article. It's essentially a story that Sherman Alexie tells um, of his own personal experience. And because of that, it may not be initially clear exactly what his story has to do with gentrification. So we're just going to do a brief video just explaining a little bit of what, about what gentrification is and how it operates. What are some of the different steps that occur for gentrification to happen? And hopefully you can apply that to your reading so that you get a better understanding of the article. Before you, one of the things that you'll see are a couple of lesson objectives for this video. First and foremost, I want you to be able to describe what gentrification is and also to be able to explain how it happens. Now, I'm sure that many of you have heard the word gentrification before, but what I'm hoping is that this video helps you to think about where places of gentrification actually happen um, in Philadelphia and in the surrounding area. I'd also like for you to be able to identify some of the impacts of gentrification. What are some good things that happen because of gentrification? What are some not so good things? You know, gentrification is in the news a lot of times, and sometimes it's because of its benefits, and sometimes it's because of its consequences. And so hopefully you'll be able to identify some of those. Moreover, again, this particular lesson is designed to really help you understand the article Gentrification by Sherman Alexie better. And so after looking at this video, one of the things that I'm going to need for you to do is to read that article. All right. So first and foremost, let's think a little bit about what gentrification is. In the next slide, I'm going to give you a working definition of what gentrification is. Now, I know a few of you have heard the word before, but what do you think it is? I'm just giving you a moment to pause, consider. One of the best definitions of gentrification is this. Gentrification is the conversion of previously working class inner city districts or neighborhoods into areas of middle class residents. So that means you take an area that previously was considered to be a working class area, primarily in the inner city. And over time, you convert that area into a place that's going to be attractive for middle class families. And so when we talk about it being attractive to middle class families, it's not just the types of houses and the people moving there, but it's also going to be the businesses that are there, the kinds of entertainment that's there. The kinds of opportunities for arts, culture, music that are there as well. So all of these things factor into gentrification. Remember, gentrification only moves one rung up the socioeconomic ladder from working class to middle class. And that's something really important to remember. Got it? Great. Let's continue. 
Because now that we have a definition for gentrification, it's really helpful for us to think about, well, how does gentrification happen? We've heard the word, we have a definition, but now we need to think about what are the steps that one takes when they begin to gentrify a neighborhood. Let's take a look. In the next slide, we get a chance to actually see what steps actually happen for gentrification to occur. It's really important for you to write down these steps because eventually we're going to apply these general steps to actually specific incidences of gentrification that are probably going to be local for us. So let's take a look at these steps for a moment. Step one, local residents, usually middle class, higher income group, begin to actually improve their houses. Now improving their houses may mean them moving into a particular neighborhood, buying up particular buildings or properties, knocking down old homes, old, business, old buildings, and building new ones. Sometimes it's none of those exactly. Sometimes it's a developer coming in and buying up lots of property in order to do something. Step two, over time, if enough people do this, it forces the price of the homes to go up. And it's not just the prices of the actual physical structures. Sometimes what goes up is the rent. Step three, that price increase encourages wealthier people and developers to come to the area, which also forces the poor people out who can't afford the housing. Step four, this then encourages high-end shops to appear now that there's a market for them. So the old corner stores are replaced with actual grocery stores or high-end specialty shops. And this leads us directly into step five, where a lot of the local stores are then replaced by higher-end stores. Not necessarily, but they're replaced with more market-friendly establishments that are more familiar to the middle class. So those corner stores end up getting replaced with actual grocery stores. The mom and pop businesses, mom and pop hardware stores end up getting replaced by a Kmart or a Target. Those old eateries like your delis and your pubs they're replaced by chain stores, McDonald's, Wendy's, Chipotle, maybe even special bars. All of those changes are signs of gentrification. When the character of a particular neighborhood shifts and changes for another population. Now, I know these steps are relatively short. But now we want to turn our attention to actually thinking about, well, how can we apply these steps or how can we see these steps applied in real life situations? So here's what I'd like for you all to do. Using the notes that you've just made, I want you to write a paragraph that describes how gentrification has affected a particular area of Philadelphia. Now, it doesn't particularly have to be long. But I just want you to think about where you've heard the word gentrification applied when it comes to Philly. You might be thinking about particular areas of the city, and that makes a lot of sense. One resource that you can use, of course, is you can do a Google search online. I wouldn't suggest using the databases for this necessarily. You could, but you'll also find some really recent articles if you do um, a Google search just about gentrification in Philadelphia. Lots of stuff will come up. What you see on the screen right now is a special, a special segment that the Philadelphia um, Inquirer did on gentrification in Philadelphia. I just went to philly.com and typed in Philadelphia and gentrification and this uh, special topics article, The Problems and the Promise, of gentrification in Philadelphia comes up. It might be a good place for you all to start in terms of thinking about gentrification in Philadelphia neighborhoods. Just something for you all to consider. 
So, once you get your ideas together, I want you to submit your paragraphs, your examples, on the Canvas assignment page in the module right after this video. Again, it doesn't have to be extensive. You can type it right into the box given for the assignment, or you can do an attachment, a Word file, or a PDF. It's entirely up to you. I hope you found this video useful. I hope you have a better understanding of what gentrification is and what things lead up to gentrification. And when you read the Sherman Alexie article, I hope you can see where his example lies and how it ties into this issue that we're bringing up right now. So, I hope all is well, and I hope to talk to you soon. Don't forget that on Thursday, when we have our online class, it's going to be live, so make sure that you sign in at 6.30 through Canvas through the conferencing function. You can join the conference and we'll have our live class. Until then, be well, and I'll talk to you on Thursday.